I want to encourage you out of the prophets. I don't want to quote the verses just for time's sake. But we have never seen salvation encircling the earth as it is this very day. Many of the things that we have believed for, things that were in my heart now 40 years ago, they were in my sister's heart and my brother-in-law's heart. There was a time period where I wondered, would it be in my son's generation or my grandson's? I was fine with that. But I knew that he was going to do certain things that we would not let go. We knew he was sure to be faithful to his promise. But I want to encourage you as you walk this walk in August will never be like anything we've ever done before. It's not going to be like the street witnessing. We're having to strangle people to even listen to us, talk to us. Everything has changed. I want us to go out there with such a demonstration and anticipation of him doing things we've never seen before. Oh, yeah. Not only to my own family and my personal family, but to every one of our families. This is the day for us to embrace this promise and go with such power and energy. Remembering this. We're here to be lovers, servants, and reconcilers. That's it. That's it. That's it. He'll be the ultimate judge. That's not our responsibility. But let us, if you don't mind, cross over like Joshua. I don't care how many times you want to trumpet, how many times you want to yell it, but just let us know that there's no mountain too big, no valley too low, and we're not afraid of any giant, but we're not afraid of any king. We're here to see the victory of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now, I generally don't need help um, because I'm in, I still love, as you notice, I'm, I'm between white and black. I'm beige. The sun has a thing of doing that to me, and I love it. That's because I might be white out here, but in here, oh, no, baby. Uh-uh. Yeah, no, 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 no. Well, well, well. Yeah, so what an honor for me to be part of a mixed congregation that is both white and black, a church that was born, set for all peoples of all faiths. Beautiful. Yeah. So my brothers are going to help me up there. Romans chapter 4. I really didn't want to take that time, but I couldn't help it. How am I doing so far, Ryan? All right, buddy, yeah. AJ? You just nod at me. Thumbs up, baby, all right. Come on, you got to hear from the young people. It's all good. <laughs> Romans chapter 4. Oh, did, I, did I say how much I, what an honor it is for me to be here this morning? That really, I appreciate everything he has said. He, I, I, appreciate, I appreciate everything he has said about me, but the truth of the matter is really... I'm the one, Linda and I are really the ones honored, humbled to be a part of this church, a part of your pastor, Bishop Elect's life. And for me to even be here this morning, I am beyond, if you don't mind me saying it, jacked and stoked. <laughs> and I have no hangover. Sorry, that slipped out. <laughs> Oops. That was just too good. We couldn't pass that one to Bishop, you know. Verse 16. Beautiful words by the Apostle Paul. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. No parentheses, of course, in, in the Greek or Hebrew, but... The translators are making an emphasis here. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him who he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. Verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall they seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about 100 years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21, we'll finish in a moment. Listen to this beautiful verse. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able, able also to perform it. Hebrews chapter 11, one verse. Verse 3. 
Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the rhema, by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Let me just say some opening statements out of this verse. It is speaking about everything that you and I see. He declared by his own word the invisible world in this present world. He spoke it and it came into existence. But it also means this, that by faith we know there were periods of time marked off by spiritual significances. So the things which do appear were made, things that are seen were made by things that did not yet appear. So the Hebrew letter, this 11th chapter has been called many things. The chapter of faith, the chapter of heroes, all those things. But in reality, it is this. It is a history of God from the beginning of time declaring over generations things that were to be spiritual markings spiritual dimensions over every generation. You see, he has spoken over every generation from eternity, and his hope, heaven's dream and passion, was that in every generation, the people living there would embrace the thing he has spoken and believe it, that they might see it visible in the earth. And so he gives it. Let me just, I would love to stop at each one of these. I can't, though. Abel, Enoch, Noah. Let me just stop at Noah just for a second. What happens when the earth is filled with violence? Every man does evil in his heart continually. It is the beginning of a pattern that we will see. There's a dream in heaven. Only heaven can answer such a moment. And the Lord will find a man with, that has grace. He has found the whole room of them right now. And that man will begin to build something that was a dream in heaven. And that thing he will build will bring salvation to his family. Listen, and the whole earth, the the. The, the, the fighting, the arguing, the, the animosity, the evil that covered the earth will instantly be changed. He said I'll, to, to Noah, I'll never flood the earth again, but he'll tell Moses, which is our dream, I will flood the earth with my glory. It'll accomplish the same thing. What a moment in time. That's why I'm not afraid. When it seems like it's evil, when it seems like men are doing what's in their evil in their heart, when it just seems like violence, don't do the news. Don't fear it. Just look here. He's going to build something that will change it all. See, we're never going to get done. This is not good. Noah, Abraham, Sarah, I'll come back here in a moment. There's a key with Abraham because he's going to be the beginning of a people representing an invisible God. He is the start of something the earth has never known before. He is the beginning of something he always intended. So there's things he will do with Abraham and Sarah that we were to hold on to. We were to know because he was going to continue in every generation. He is the beginning of something, the father of us all. I love Isaac. Jacob's amazing. Oh, let me just stop at Joseph for a second. So what happens when you get a dream? You're a punky 17-year-old. And your brothers don't like it. And so they find a pit to throw you in. And it just seems like everything you do right gets turned against you. Anybody ever seen to have that kind of thing go down? And it just seems impossible. Now you're in an Egyptian prison, the dirtiest, most filthiest prison that ever ever existed in the world, with no hope, no ability. It seems like maybe the dream was wrong. Maybe it was bad pizza. Maybe the prophetic word was wrong. Maybe the pastor really didn't know what he was saying. Maybe I've been believing in something impossible. And sovereignly, as he always does, this young man in one moment's time, raises up second in in charge of the world, and the dream comes true. That's why it never matters what happens or what's going on in our lives. I can trust him even if I find myself in a prison. He'll break the doors open. Oh, I got to stop at Moses just for a second. It's the beginning of the reality that I really wanted to talk about, but I won't until I'm back here in October. That he wanted to dwell with his people. Some loved his hand, some loved his reign, but he wanted to dwell among them. The prophet Ezekiel will say it this way, that the steps of his feet would be amongst his people. But it would be the glory of God that was never known until this moment, and it was the thing that separated the people of God from the people of the earth. We were never to live without it. I'm going to tell you right now, it's returning back to his people. It was never, we were never to live without it, ever. I'm not going to live without it. Not going to. Joshua. Then he gets to the judges. He's starting to get a little tired. He mixes them up. Gideon, Baruch, Jephthah, Samson. 
and David, and then he finds his Samuel, and then he finally says, and all the prophets, then he gets to the 38th verse, and he's almost out of breath, and he says this, I want you to know that the world was not worthy of them. I don't, it doesn't mean that they were to walk around with some kind of arrogancy like we've had. We're here, you better be happy about it. Oh, no, 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 it's not that. But what I want to say to us this morning is please know this, no matter what you think about your life, or what anybody said, you are absolutely valuable to your families, to this city, to this nation, to this world. Valuable. Worthy. But I've come this morning to look at Abraham. We're going to see these. First, I want us to see the character of God in the life of Abraham. What is someone's character? That's the thing you can depend on no matter what's happening. Yes. Give you your worst day, you know that person's character will stand the test. Yes. You don't think you put your hope and dream into someone and you think, well, I don't know if they'll be there. Oh, no, 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 no. When it's their character, yes. nothing changes. Nothing changes. There's his character is revealed. I can trust it no matter what. The second thing is his way. Can you imagine a whole generation died with only one man knowing the way of God? I need to know it. I know this, whatever it is or whatever it feels like, it's positive. Absolutely. And then I want to look at a couple of things about Abraham's life, and then we'll be finished for the word. Are you good? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for, again, you know this already, the tremendous honor. Not only to, for me to be here, but for those folks who are listening, especially to my baby, Father, I believe that this church has been planted not just by suggestion or by an afterthought, but by a divine will of our God. And these people you're joining together are here to shake the earth, change the earth. And they are those that will be known as the ones who turn the world upside down have come to us. I believe it. I believe it for here, this city, this county, this state, for our nation, our world, the church being who she was meant to be. Father, I thank you for that. In our lives this morning, beginning with me, create new hope for the promise of God, new passion, new desire. Let the revelation of Jesus Christ and your appearing be to us all. Father, I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. First, about his character. 17th verse, let me just do it. We're not going to do verses just for you, for us. Be quicker. The first thing about his character is this. He is the God who raises the dead. I've got to do it out of the context. We like that. It's a phrase that we know, but it's out of the life of Abraham. Here he is, 99 years old. I don't care what kind of pill they make in the future. He's dead. Sarah's womb, dead. No hope, no chance. It's over. But I've got to know this about his character because sometimes I look at myself and think, you know what, Jay? There's no way you could be who you're to be. There was a time when I looked at the church and I saw her like Sarah, a dead womb. How could we ever see what God wants to do? But then he had to revive me and refresh me. And he had to let me know this one thing. Yo, he is the God who raises the dead. No matter how dead the dream or the promise might be, he's the God who raises the dead. Yes. Second thing about his character, I love it. He is the God that called those things that be not as though they were. What a phrase. But I got to do the context. Are you okay? I got to play like a little. I love doing this anyhow. So Abraham is 24 years in which will be the promised land. He's got this, his companions, King James. It's more of his posse. They're three Amri brothers. Aner, Mamre, and Eshol. They're his, there's, there's his buddies, his, his, his posse, his hangout boys. He's known them for 24 years. And they're meeting down at the Starbucks at Beersheba. Thankfully, they put one in there just recently. <laughs> so every Wednesday, they would meet down there. And so Abram went down there. He was a little late. And so he came in. He says, oh, Mamre, yes, girl, dude, how, what's up, man? Good to see you guys. Yeah, listen, I'm going to get, well, you want the latte? Well, I'm doing the skinny latte right now because I just want to kind of keep the, you know, Get the, yeah. So as he went there, he said, okay, Abram. And Abram stopped, and he said, oh, by the way, my name's not Abram anymore, which means father of height. My name is now Abraham, which means father of many nations. Now, see, in this culture, your name depicted who you were. Destiny is the revelation of God. So Mamre looked at his brothers. I mean, they're his friends. you got friends like this. And they, they said, I'm sorry, Ab Abraham, Abram, whatever. So what do you mean your name has changed? I don't get it. Well, it's changed. Well, who changed it? Well, 
God. Well, which God? Well, my God. Your God. We've never seen your God. We don't even know your God. We've got a lot of gods. You know, us, the Egyptians, we all have gods. So who's this God of yours? Well, he's, you know, he's the God that created everything in the universe. The, the, the guy upstairs, the big guy. And they go, well, we don't understand. You're telling us your name. I mean, listen, you were your, you were, you were your pop. You're telling us that you are now father of many nations, right? Abraham said, yeah. Well, listen, we can understand father of height, even though you're not tall, but we get that. But what you're telling us now is, is your father of many nations? Now, listen, we've known you now, what, 24 years? How old are you? 99. Now, listen, be honest with you, Sarah, sweet looking, but old. I mean, I mean I'm sorry, how old is Sarah? Is she, what is he, Mary? What? Yeah, she's 90, right? 90, yeah, yeah. So all these years, we were always wondering, where's your family? We've never met your kids. I mean, do you, do you have any? We never met them. And Abraham says, well, that's because I don't have kids. And Mary just, just the hell his head and goes, wait, wait, wait. How can you be father of many nations when you don't have any children, no offspring, not a son, not a daughter? And he goes, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. All I know is he said it. So, I mean, it is. And, and they said to him, no, it isn't, is, it isn't. You got to get, get real, Abraham. You got to get your mind together. You got you to gotta get real. You got to get down to the earth. You got to get, listen, you cannot be Abraham. You're dead. And Abraham said, I don't know what to tell you. He is the God that calls those things that be not as if they already were. Nothing I love more than, I, that's why I love prophecy. I love it. And it's without dimensions for me. I'm just going to go, this is, this. you know, I love, I love prophesying over somebody and their families at the other end. They don't want me to know what they're thinking. They're just inside shaking their head. <laughs> that kid will never be that. <laughs> oh, yeah, or that guy, or this church will never be that. Oh, really? I want to tell you, first of all, he's the God who raised the dead. It's his character. But here's the other thing I love about him. He loves to declare something that cannot be as if it already is. It's his character. Second thing about him is he, this is his way. He will test us. You know, sometimes, I'm, I'm not a good tester. I, I never was. I'm, I'm nervous. I get a huge zit right there. My forehead's large. Goes from here to here now. That shows up now. I never was. So I was an easy tester. And I, I got, as, as I grew more in education, I would give you the answers, 10 of them, give you the answers with the questions, and then give you the test. I mean, because I just know those, you know, everybody's different. We take tests differently. We all get nervous. But here's the thing I want you to know. Abraham was tested 10 times in almost 30 years, probably a little bit more. He fails eight of them. Now, my brother-in-law is way better at math than me. He's got an incredible mind. Now, I'm pretty sure, Don, uh, 20 is a F. Is that you? I mean, I had some Fs, but I don't think I've ever had a 20. I mean, a 20. But here's the beautiful thing out of the life of Abraham for us. He doesn't grade us on the test. He grades us on our response to the test. I wish I could tell you I've passed all of them. The truth is I've failed more times than I want to admit. But Abraham always returned back to his God. And the Lord said, Abraham, A plus. Now, I want us to look at Abraham's life quickly. Verse 18, the first thing about him is he hoped against hope, according to the word spoken, that he would be a father of many nations, so shall thy seed be. When I first saw that, I thought, it's amazing. First of all, you've got to view the Old Testament through the lens of the New, and I've got to look at the New Testament as Abraham's walking through his life, because it appears as though he lost hope. He didn't have hope, but the New Testament reveals an inwardness with him. But here he is. He hopes when there's no reason to hope. i got to tell you this morning, I want us to be a people that hope when there's absolutely no reason to hope. I want us to be a family, and you individually to be a family that hopes when everything says there's no hope. I want to be a man that not only for my own family, for my extended family, for my brothers and my sisters for our world that hopes when everything says there's no hope. I want to know how do you hope 
when there seems to be no reason to hope. Verse 19, he considered not his own body, now dead, being almost 100 years old, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. I love this word, considered. It means to fix your eyes upon something. That's the idea of the word. And I, I love Paul's writing because what he says is he never got his eyes fixed on his inability to produce that which God had promised. He never got his eyes on his, his inability. When he looked at himself and his circumstances, he kept his eyes on the promise of God. He kept his sight on what God had said. I want to be a man, as I've said already. I don't want to keep repeating, but I want us to hear it. I want us to be a church. I look in the mirror many times, and I think there's just no way that I could be as I get personally stressed and strained and, and wonder, how is this ever going to get done? And I begin to look at my own inadequacies, my pride, my attitude, my insufficiencies, my lacks. They're there. I want to be a man that never sets his eyes on what's not possible, but I keep them set upon him and his promises. I want to be such, I want us to be such a people. The third thing is in verse 20. I love this word, staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. I hope you don't mind me using the old King James. I just love the language. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. But this word staggered is a beautiful word. For the, my Italian family and those who are watching, it's the word agita. It's the new word is acid reflux. You know how that is. Ooh, man. What's the matter? Well, that pepperoni pizza was good yesterday, but today it's not so good. Or it's that, you know that 11 o'clock phone, the phone rings at 11? You know, you know right away that's, you wish, that's that clearinghouse calling you to let you know you won the money. It's not. It's not good news. The phone rings were like this. What do you think that is? I don't know. My immediate response is, don't answer it. I want to be able to sleep tonight. I don't want to know. Or my phone dings. Shut that thing off. I don't know what that is. You know, when my kids call, I love my kids and my grandkids. My grandkids now, because they could FaceTime me and, and call my nephews and nieces too, but my nephews don't do it and my nieces don't do it. My grandkids all the time. Grandpa, are you there? I know what that means. I want something from Amazon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they got the technology now. It's never, how are you? I'd, I'd fall out. How am I? Not a chance. And then if I don't answer them, two seconds later, I know you're there. I use the excuse, I'm driving. I don't give out to get in the golf cart and sit there and don't move. I'm driving. I get it. Here's what it is. It's this inward fight. Well, I wish I could tell you, just being honest with you this morning, because we're family, we're people. We're, we're at such a, a moment of God for us to believe. But I wish I could say that every, everything I've ever heard, every promise of God, I don't have that inward fight. See, I'm a guy, and I, always, I have to wear this thing. It's just the way I am. I'm built this way. The men understand this. i, I got to present peace, and I'm overcoming, and everything's fine. But there's times on the inside when nothing was fine. There's no peace. I'm stressed about everything. My wife's been good at it, and I, I don't like to talk. I don't, I don't like going there. What's going on with you? I'm fine. And the, the Lord's like this. You know, I don't want to see that. You live in peace. The peace came from you. You don't understand this. Oh, but then I remembered someone from up there came here, and he knows it. Yeah. 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 He's acquainted with grief, sorrows. But the, Paul will say that Abraham never struggled with the inward fight. He had the inward victory and was strong in faith. I want to be such a man. I want to be such a people. Final thing here is the last verse, verse 21. And being fully persuaded, man. I, the only way I know how to do that is. <laughs> being fully persuaded is sleeping in a boat while the storm's raging. Fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. That what? He had promised, not me or us. He is able to perform. So what is it? What, 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 what's, the, what's the secret? How can we be men and women and people that hope when there's no hope? 
How can we never get our eyes on our own weaknesses or this world but we keep them on the promise of God? I want to know. Yes. How can we be a people that win this inward victory that even if the storms are raging around me, I'm at rest? Yes. How is it possible I can hold on to the promise of God and yes. still believe him with the news and with the chaos and even with sometimes the rhetoric of the church and rhetoric of prophets and people? How do I hold on to it? How do I live fully persuaded? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How? It's here. Let me quote it for you. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Verse 20. But was strong in faith. Here it is. Giving glory to God. I know it's just as simple, and I almost apologize for this. Giving glory. Four dimensions of it. Can I give them to you real quick? I know you have a great Ezra here, a priestly scribe, which I so love about him. Love that about him and the team. Here it is. Is, is it can be that simple? Oh, it is. First dimension of giving glory. It's all through the revelation. It's all through the scripture. It's a heavenly pattern. First of all, it's thanksgiving. So this year, I'm going to be saved 40 years. I'm 62. I got saved when I was 22 years old. You know, that year that I got saved, my sister came after me, then my parents. We, I mean, it was just this thing that happened in our whole family. It was amazing. My brother-in-law came after that. It was an amazing thing in our family. But that day, I was so thankful. I mean, I knew who I was. I know my secrets. This love that I felt was like, <laughs> and then I, I didn't even know the scripture, but I couldn't believe that I was translated. The power of darkness held me, and instantly they couldn't say, hey, wait a minute, that's Jay. He owns us. The Lord said, out. And I was immediately, as you, translated into the kingdom of his dear son instantaneously. And I've been living in it ever since. I want you to know I was thankful then, but I got to tell you, this morning I got on my knees in my bedroom. Linda was still sleeping. I fell on my face as I do. This isn't to do this to Jay LaRue. I was just, not because of this, I was just thankful. I'm more thankful this morning than I was then. Just thankful. Sometimes we forget. So what, we know when hope begins to diminish, be thankful. Sometimes we forget it. And I just kind of sometimes, I do it in the gym, but I do it in the mall too because I don't care. Well, I do care. I don't want to offend anyone, but I get a little hand up like this. See that? You can do that with my head and smile. Nobody will bother you. A little Starbucks. <laughs> Linda will see me from the thing and she'll go like this. And so I'll just put the Starbucks on and go like this to Linda. And I'll say it to her, I'm thankful. How about this morning, maybe we get back to just being thankful. So when I'm struggling with the promise and I got this inward fight, thankful, first off. Second one, you know these, praise. Second dimension of giving glory, praise. There's four, praise. Of course, it comes from this tribe of Judah. Again, you got a great scriber. It is, I appreciate all this. But let me just go back to the root just for a second. You see, Jacob has two wives. One is Leah, one is Rachel. Rachel's like, ho, ho, ho. Leah's not bad, but he loves Rachel. So Leah had to work for his love. Me, you know, sometimes there's a lot of people who've grown up like this that they, they have to work for, just to be loved. That's how Leah was. She had to work. She had to make plans and, and do things just to get Jacob to love her. Well, she had a son. It was her fourth son. She took him up in her arms and she said, I will praise him. She named him Judah. I will praise him because he's given me a son. So I want to say to you, I love the music. I appreciate the, uh, the radio. I was listening to Jesus culture, some music on Pandora. I love all the sounds. I need it because I'm not musical. But I don't praise him because of that. I praise him, and I got to. You know why? He has given me his son. I just, I just got to. I just got to. I praise him because he's given me his son. <laughs> Third, it's not a Bible word, but it's all through the Bible. Adoration. You adore it. I love when, you know, 
when, when uh, I meet g- young men who have a girl that they're in love with, they bring her over, and my nieces and nephews, uh, the, the kids that I meet all of them, it's just, it's Dr. J, I said, yeah. I go, is that her? <laughs> they, they, they almost forget her name. Yeah, she's, oh, uh, Nancy. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't mean that. Uh, it, it's precious. It's amazing to me. Those men, I shared it with us a time before, they said at that, that, that final week he was in Bethany, and that young woman, Mary, poured that alabaster box of oil upon him, and they all said, what, what a waste. See, even though they were there that long, he was not yet precious to them. But Peter will write, Peter will write later, he'll say, he is the precious cornerstone. I want him to be precious to me. You can't sell me with anything this world offers. No, 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 no. He's more precious than my Linda, who I love dearly. Far more precious than anything. As he is to you. I adore him. So there's times when I'm going through life and I'm struggling and I got this issue, this church, I'm going here, I got family things, my grandchildren, my son, my daughter, family stuff that's going on, difficulty, people needing healing, people have cancer, it's just this whole thing and I'm getting inundated. I've sometimes just got to just withdraw just for a few minutes and get back to thanking him and praising him and remembering that you're the reason I live. I adore you. Come, let us adore him. Adore him. Precious to me. Yeah. Sold as you. The final one, of course, is worship. Whether Greek or Hebrew, it's going to be the same thing. Lay prostrate. I did it once and I got fired. I, I, I was... Pastor Ron had to help me. I just did. I, he learned that we do worship. So I went to work and I, I laid prostrate. And I went over time and they said, what are you doing, Jay? Well, I don't, I, it's hard to explain. Well, I can explain it to you. You can do it out in your car. <laughs> and so I, I didn't understand. I said, well, if I'm going to worship you, how do I lay prostrate? Then I realized as I watched him, it says, he says, I glorified you in the earth. I only saw him sing one hymn. So it can't just be singing. What is it? Then I realized I see if I have this heart that whatsoever I do, I do it heartily unto him and not unto anyone else. It's worship. So if I come in here this morning, I mean, I love this church. It's amazing. These guys greet me and everything. But I have a time that Jay has to be the greeter. And so when I'm at the airport and there's a guy, there's, there's paper towels, there's paper towels on the floor. I mean, this isn't, again, a pat on the back. Those paper towels. So if I reach down and pick up that paper towel and put it in the garbage, it's unto him. If I put the dishes in the dishwasher in my house, it's unto him. If I do my neighbor's yard, my father's yard, if I do it unto him, it is worship. The highest dimension of it is for me to lay on my face. I can't just serve. I've got to lay on my face, too. Stand with me for a moment. Oh, I'm doing good with time. Great. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm going to say some, something to him in a moment that's really a reality of the, of the wind of the Lord and the spirit of the movement of God upon us here. But how about we just need this morning, I need sometimes to be refreshed. You know, and and, I hope you didn't mind the simplicity of these verses. They're just beautiful. They're normal things for us. But sometimes I forget them. I get so caught up in being Dr. J. (laughs) Well, I got to be, have this everything accurate, tight. I got to know it. And the Lord just kind of yawns when I'm like that. (sighs) And I realize, yeah chill, baby. It's all, it's already all right. This morning, you just need to be refreshed in the hope of 
of the promise of God. No matter what anyone says or what anyone has done or where you are or what you haven't been or haven't done or your history or your past, no matter what, you just need it this morning. I'm asking for it to be refreshed for us as a people, us as family, us as a church, to this community, this county, this state of Florida, this nation, to our world. Can we embrace this declaration of this spiritual dimension over our world. Can we here in Leesburg grip it that our whole world experience it? Can we have a fresh hope in it? Just raise your hand if you just need it. In Jesus' name, <clears throat> hope refreshed, revived. I, in the word, by the word of the Lord, deferred hope, I command to cease and hope return. Even if we have to wait, I've been waiting, as I said earlier, 40 years for something. My sister and I, my parents and my brother are still waiting for one of our siblings to come. I still have nieces and nephews that haven't made it over. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, we haven't come over to the promise to leave anybody behind. No way. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way. My brother-in-law, the same way for our families. We're going to continually believe. We have believed. We're going to continue to believe. For my, like my cousin, for our family, for my niece as well. For my cousin who's not here. In the name of Jesus, hope revived, hope refreshed. By the word of the Lord. Just strength right now to set our eyes upon him. To be able to move them off of the impossibilities. Our own weaknesses, our own frailties, our own family. I, I love my dad. I appreciate that I'm Rini LaRue and Natalie LaRue's son, but I'm no longer their son. I'm his son. And he's no longer the son of his mother, my grandmother Blanche, and my grandfather who passed away before I ever knew him. He, he's not a son of them anymore, though we love them and honor them, but he is also the son of the living God as we are, daughters of the living God. So we're setting our eyes upon him who has made the promise. He is faithful to keep his word. If we're staggering, you've got that inside pressure, even now with children, family, work, situation, life. Just need a refresh. What well, you're doing it right now, we're giving him glory. As, we, as I'm speaking, we're giving him glory. I, I can hear it. Be glorified. Be honored. You're worth it all. We bless you. It's so simple. It's five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, a couple minutes maybe at lunch. It'll grow. It'll increase. We're just setting time to give him glory. Yes. Yes. Be glorified. Yes. Yes. Be enlarged in our eyes. Yes. Be magnified yes. before yes. us. Yes. Be magnified. Yes. Be great, awesome yes. before yes. us. Yes. Let the revelation and the appearing of Jesus Christ be to all of us. In Jesus' name. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Be glorified. Let the promise of God be made fresh and new in us like it was yesterday, like it was this morning, like it's present. Revive the promise. Beautiful. 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 Love you. Love you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ho! Ho! Yeah! Unto him be glory and honor and power forever. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. Amen. You know why we, and I'm not, I'm not going to make this any less. Do you want to say something, Bishop? Okay. Listen, this is, and I, I love the emotion. I love where we are. I love this moment. It's beautiful. This is like, this is be, this is be normal life, right? That's what I want. Just, just be normal. But you know, there's, you know, you know in the, the Eagles scored, I was with some Pittsburgh Steelers fans. They loved it because the Patriots were losing, and uh, my wife's a Yankee fan, so when Aaron Judge is a home run, she's all up. You know, we, we just love we, love, we love to cheer when we, have, when we see a victory. Yeah. We do. Sometimes it's our own team. But we're on a team, and 
the victory's already been set. So if you don't mind, Joe, I, wanna, I just want to kind of... Just a couple of verses for us to think about, okay? Just to, just to kind of get in the memory bank. With God, nothing is impossible. Through Jesus Christ. Well, I don't know. I'm old. I'm limping. I don't know much. I have all kinds of problems. I have all kinds of troubles. Mm, mm, mm. With Jesus Christ, I can do all things. Hallelujah. One last question. Sorry, I gotta stop now. I gotta stop because I want to go on. This is good though. Yes, sir. It's been our Father's good pleasure. To give us the kingdom. It no longer suffers violence. We are not violent people anymore. That end of John the Baptist. He brought a kingdom that cannot be moved. It is a kingdom that has no limitations to it. A spirit of God upon us that is without limitation. Certainly let not us put the limitations on him or on the demonstration and manifestation and revelation of who he is and what he intends to do. I'm not living with that anymore. I stopped that a long time ago. It isn't an arrogancy or cockiness or we're here. Oh, no, no. We're visiting. We're pilgrims. We're soldiers. We're just here. We're honoring the the natives, letting them know we came just to bring a good news, but a good news with power. All right, one last time. 